Hello and welcome to this course on optical spectroscopy and microscopy. Um, so far what we have done is that uh, we have looked at the principles, basic principles starting from the light matter interaction, how do we describe the light, how do we describe the matter um, and then um, generation of the light itself is the light, uh, laser lights. Um, having generated the laser light then how do we route these laser light through different optical elements or using mirrors, um, how we can actually choose the path the light beam takes uh, in a laboratory frame so that we can actually um, uh, <coughs> send the beam into different, op, uh, different uh, uh, send the beam and construct different optical uh, equipment using these uh, mirrors and the light. Uh, in doing so, we also uh, we were also looking at the different principles of uh, optical microscopy, the, particularly the laser scanning microscopy. Um, in uh, if you are to um, uh, look at the laser scanning microscopy and um, um, the the reason why we are actually looking at is the localization of the excitation and the um, emission. I mean uh, if you can do that in spatially resolved manner then that is something that uh, uh, it is of tremendous value and uh, in doing so <coughs> um, I used um, without explicitly stating I used some of the simple geometrical optic principles right. We uh, if you remember we actually started off by saying okay uh, imagine if there are two lenses that are Um, kept uh, in line the, uh, such, uh, that are kept such that their optical centers um, <coughs> uh, fall in a uh, straight line and then uh, what we said is that the to understand the confocal principle to, do, to localize um, the emission photons in x, y and z all we have to think of is that um, think of imaging or think of the rays that are originating from uh, the focus of this lens and what happens to it when it passes through another lens ok. Now um, and then the idea is that we will actually um, put in here as uh, aperture that restricts the um, uh, that uh, selectively um, send, collects more of the light from the uh, focal plane than before or after. Now the uh, point here is that um, if you look at this geometry, um, one of the uh, there are two lenses right, this is the quintessential microscope that you can think of and uh, one of these lenses, the lens that is closer to the sample plane um, that is your sample. we call that as an objective lens. It is of paramount in, uh, importance in any microscopic system for quite a few reasons. Um, as you will see in this lecture that um, the ability of the, the, fi the uh, our, uh, see all of this we are um, uh, gearing up to be able to localize uh, very, very, very uh, close to the theoretical limits or the uh, limits that we can uh, reach with an ordinary optics. So, if you have to do that, um, then you, the lot depends on the nature of this lens and um, we would understand what are all the different um, effects, that, what are all the different um, artifacts or the effects that we need to keep in mind and how we can overcome these things in a modern uh, uh, objective lens um, is the subject matter of this lecture. Uh, in order to uh, get into that, let us revisit our simple high school optics and uh, in um, 
in school we when we want to actually understand the um, the way in which the light is uh, propagating to the lens we would use ray diagrams geometrical ray diagrams. So, they follow very simple principles I am going to just list out few of them not all of them few of them that is essential for us to follow in this course I mean follow in this lecture that may be uh, useful number one. So, there are two kinds of lenses we know it is a um, convex the uh, lens in, in this case specifically it is a biconvex lens or a concave lens all right. So, now if I, in order to understand the propagation through this what we are going to do is we are going to draw um, at the least two uh, rays emanating uh, um, uh, uh, two rays. So, let us take a simple biconvex lens ray number 1 um, passes through uh, the center optical center of the lens originating from an object. Now, uh, that has the, uh, the array that is um, originating from a point in an object right. So, that is my um, optical axis. So, the array that is originating from a point in an object and that passes through the optical center goes undeviated right that is the rule number 1 ok. Ray through the center goes um, undeviated all right it just goes to the center and keeps going. So, now um, the second uh, most useful rule here uh, is a ray that originates from that same point but then that is parallel to the um, optical axis right that is this blue line ok. The, the, the ok maybe should uh, draw this in a different color. So, let us red line this is the optical ray number 1. Second the optical ray that goes parallel to the optical axis for a con biconvex lens goes through the focal point f the point f on the optical center um, on the other side of the lens it deviates such that it goes through on the other side of the lens ok. Now, this point is called as the focal point f ok. Now, um, whenever whenever the um, these two light rays meet or wherever it meets and that is the image I mean that corresponds to the image of the object that you have uh, originally started with all right. So, I can think of this uh, object consisting of many such points and then you can actually draw each of this and then um, construct this whole object and we would um, have an object shown up um, things like uh, here. Now, the second um, rule there that we have used is this ray parallel to optical axis passes through um, a point point 
f on the other side for the biconvex lens ok. Now, um, for a concave lens uh, the rules are um, the, 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 the second rule stays exactly same except that the side uh, I mean um, what happens is that it is going to um, the line will be such that it is uh, um, I mean you have to x I mean it, it will be de deviating away from uh, the optical uh, axis and then you have to extend uh, such that it meets on the um, side where the object itself is there ok. The, there are two sides right this is the the side ok. So, this side of the lens which is colored yellow here and where you have the object space you can think of that or the sample space and this is uh, on the other side where it is colored light blue or you can think of that as the image space. I am actually doing it in the um, opposite coloring the opposite side so that uh, we uh, but the with two different colors. So, um, for the bicon uh, concave uh, everything will be more or less the same except now uh, this will be on the other side. We, we would not be using much of that as of now. So, we would not have the biconvex by uh, concave. So, we would not uh, specifically go into that, but it is important to know note that um, for the biconvex these rules are very very simple right. So, you start from the object goes through the center goes undeviated start from the object goes parallel to the lens then it um, goes through the focus and um, wherever these two rays meet then you, you form the image. So, now in such a system you can um, uh, the, the distance you know, right. So, the distance between the object and the lens and the image and the lens are uh, given by um, let us call this as um, u and v. Um, so, you can uh, you can write down this uh, in such a system it is given by 1 over u. Uh, all right. So, this uh, formula again we have seen it before right. So, the um, point here is uh, for me to say that ok um, these are related and you have a very uh, you can actually define where exactly these rays will go through. Now, this comes in very very handy. Um, when uh, in the lab many times what you do is that you construct um, you want to expand or you want to change the size of the beam. Why would you do that? Um, so, now for, um, in the when you are talking about assembling a microscope or constructing a microscope uh, one, um, we want uh, we said ok let us start start with the simple microscope with the um, that um, has this principle of uh, uh, that you can use it for detecting in a confocal manner. So, the first thing that comes to you or comes to your mind is that in order for you to actually um, get the, the, the smallest focus you need to expand this beam the widest possible I mean it need, need to be as wide as that of the um, lens itself the objective lens itself. Um, so, uh, just to uh, give you the picture to start with the laser light is uh, um, pretty pretty um, small um, the diameter of the laser light is pretty small it is of the order of few millimeters. In fact, we all have seen this right when you um, have a laser pointer and in any presentation when you see that that is uh, how tiny the um, laser beam is and to um, show you. Um, you know, the real world f I mean real um, objective lens the how it looks like. Um, what I am uh, going to um, show to you here is uh, a 
few of these objective lenses. So, the each of the subjective lenses they have their own characteristics that is what we are going to see in this lecture as I was telling you um, before. But I um, in a real uh, for a to get the real picture what I have um, brought here is uh, some of the um, these objective lenses that we use in the lab. Okay. So, uh, I have um, basically got um, a, a set of three lenses to I mean from two companies, two different companies one from Olympus and one I mean two from Olympus and two, one from Zeiss. Um, apart from this you also have uh, microscope manufacturers like Leica and uh, Nikon making their objective lenses. So, all of them are uh, um, uh, doing the doing their specified job um, exceedingly well. There is nothing that um, uh, they spend a lot of research and effort to make these lenses. And um, now remember I talked to you about the size of the uh, lens right. So, now they also come at varying uh, different sizes. So, one of the lens that we use in the lab that is uh, this has um, so, the this is an objective lens. So, if you look at the objective lens here, um, this lens you can see that I mean it is uh, kept upside down. So, uh, in real system you would see that um, the, the microscope body is somewhere here on the top and then you would be um, um, holding this objective lens onto the microscope body and your sample goes down here where my uh, the pen is right now. So, uh, in such a case now the aperture the back aperture right. So, that you can actually see that it is uh, pretty uh, wide okay. uh, in, um, in this case it is about uh, um, <coughs> it is about 20 millimeters or so the clear aperture. So, um, so if and then on the other hand you have also we also have um, lenses uh, again um, from a different manufacturer though um, for almost I mean um, uh, Zeiss and uh, it has its different properties. So, sometimes you need to use this as against that though now if you look at the uh, back aperture that is uh, pretty different right. So, just to give you a comparison I am going to flip it and then show both of this. So, now uh, this uh, different they are it is nothing to do with the um, the manufacturer per se, but the job of these two lenses are very different ok. We will see that in a minute ok uh, what this is. So, and uh, you can actually see that uh, there is another lens from Olympus again. Um, now, this back up, um, aperture is still different. So, now given this varying varieties of objective lenses and then their corresponding um, back apertures being different then uh, when you are constructing a microscope or constructing any localized uh, excitation system then your ability to uh, you need an ability to dynamically change or even to change um, the diameter of the beam at whim right. Because uh, did, did, uh, depending on the objective that you choose you need to be able to uh, uh, use different uh, diameters to get the sharpest focus that you can have. In such a case then uh, how do we go about doing this? Uh, so, it is very simple. So, we do that through um, the two lens system of uh, optical I mean telescopes. Um, so, in order to understand that telescope just again we have seen that in the um, we would have seen that in a, a high school except that uh, the context in which we have seen a telescope is uh, in terms of uh, getting a further I mean an image or of an object that is at a longer distance to make it appear closer right. It is just that it uh, I mean, may, I mean it magnifies um, large enough and then it uh, gives you the feeling that it is uh, really close, closer and uh, uh, so on. So, now um, to, underst uh, to understand that you would have used the geometric optics and uh, drawn the ray diagrams that we have just described. Um, now, that kind of a ray diagram is um, uh, my claim here is, is sufficient to even understand some of the um, really 
involved um, um, optical pathways and one such being um, the pathway of um, simple light microscope itself. Now, what is uh, why is it uh, complicated? Now, I am talking about a simple light microscope when I say a simple micro, uh, light microscope I'm, I mean a transmission microscope bright field transmission microscope. So, you have a sample whose uh, um, uh, the transmittance uh, is a function of space. So, you want when you put that sample in, in, uh, in your sample plane uh, you then you shine some light either from the top down and collect the light on the bottom or as I have described using this objectives these are designed uh, to have the illumination from coming from bottom and then you collect the light uh, I mean you collect the light or you see the from <coughs> the top either way. So, it is uh, up I mean the second configuration that I described to you is called an upright microscope. Uh, while the other one is an inverted microscope either way um, what you are need to do is to have an illumination path set up such that uh, the sample is uniformly illuminated right. So, imagine you have your sample or let us draw it as a square wherein um, these lines actually represent the, the blue line inside represent the change in the contrast change in the transmittivity of the sample ok. This, this could be the dark uh, regions which is which just means that the amount of light that gets transmitted through this sample is um, in that area that uh, this area is less. So, you need to be able to capture that. Now, if you want to capture that the first uh, thing you need to do is to be able to uh, uniformly illuminate the, uh, the number of photons that are hitting a yes, uh, unit area here versus an unit area here should be exactly the same. If it does not then uh, you will not be able to tell a difference between whether it is uh, uh, due to the sample being um, having this contrast or the uh, illumination itself uh, having a different contrast. So, um, to uh, this problem was uh, um, faced by uh, people earlier ok. People earlier meaning the uh, original initial microscopes had this issue. So, um, the issue uh, um, was that uh, in order to create this illumination right you need a some amount of light that can um, illuminate the sample. So, what they would do is that um, they would take in a filament and um, they would take a lens and um, simply focus that light onto the sample plane ok. That is the idea very simple idea. So, you have a sample plane and then you have a light bulb and you can the, this is called as a condenser lens because it is actually condenses the illumination light onto the sample ok. The idea here is so I have created the maximum intensity or the flux that I could actually have created that is what the purpose of illuminating the sample is. So, then um, once I have created that illumination then all that I need to do is to have another lens system where I actually uh, collect this light and uh, and so you make um, make it form an image I mean right um, through if you are detecting it through an eyepiece what you are actually doing is that you are making it form an image such that um, it falls within the f and the, the lens itself. So, this is the f of the focal length of this eyepiece. Now, when you do that um, what you end up having is that uh, a virtual image which our eye uh, when you are seeing through uh, focuses onto the retina giving you the image itself. Now, the problem here is that um, when you use a lens a very simple lens to actually um, concentrate the light that is emitted by the bulb onto the sample what happens is that this serves as a imaging system of this filament itself. So, what you end up having is that the filament image itself formed here ok. So, now 
what you end up seeing is the uh, image of the filament or part of the filament along with your sample. So, both of them superimposed on each other and that becomes uh, it can be very um, obstructive to be able to um, decipher out the fine changes in the contrast that might happen. Okay. So, that, that happens because this uh, per se the light source per se the bulb per se is a finite um, uh, dimensional light source. It is not like infinitesimally small light source wherein you have only the photons coming in where there is like a, a there is no real point uh, source uh, per se. So, now um, such kind of uh, illumination uh, is no longer in use. Uh, what we use I mean um, uh, so Mr. Kohler uh, he was uh, able to come up with a solution to overcome this uh, kind of a problem. Now, that uh, illumination we call it as a Kohler illumination okay, wherein um, we do not necessarily image the um, filament itself or the light filament itself onto the sample and con condense the light, but he said okay, we can separate these two things. One is that requiring the light I mean uh, uh, the high intensity of light that there is a and then uh, not being able to have the image on the um, sample plane image of the filament on the sample plane. So, this idea of segregating this the image from of versus the um, uniform illumination of the sample right that um, gave um, the name to that. So, um, essentially what it meant is that if you actually take a um, light bulb with a filament with a fine filament of finite dimension. So, what uh, he said is that let us put um, a um, collection lens right not just a condenser lens a collection system uh, in a modern day you would see a collection system which comprises of a concave mirror. Okay. Okay. The idea here is that if you have an object here and then it is emanating all of this light. So, if you collect all of this light and then um, uh, make a uh, send it uh, make it parallel and in addition you also have at the exit um, a collection lens all right. The job of these two object uh, these two the, the, the mirror and the collection lens is to um, illuminate an aperture okay, or a diaphragm it is called um, we call this a field which is called as a field diaphragm. Okay. Um, that um, is kept right after the collection lens. Okay. You have a, a collection lens and then an aperture that is kept as a field diaphragm. Now, my claim here is that uh, with such an arrangement and then illuminating that field diaphragm, he was able to create an illumination on the sample plane that is very uniform. Okay. So, um, the way he would do that I am just going to list out the parts in the um, uh, and then uh, we will see in the next lecture uh, how we can actually do this diagram and then we will go back to the objective lens and then see um, what role those uh, lenses play um, in the following lecture all right. So, um, the, the he had this collection apparatus right. So, this collection apparatus and then uh, his argument was now if I were to use this collection lens and this collection assembly and uh, illuminate a field diaphragm and a uniform uh, diaphragm and then use a condenser lens now all right to image not the filament, but this field diaphragm on to my sample plane. Okay. Now, now you see at the field diaphragm you, you, you can approximate the, 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 the rays are uh, to be parallel because um, both from this um, 
um, collection I mean board from this concave mirror that is uh, reflecting the light from the film uh, the bulb as well as this collection lens. Uh, what it does is that it effectively makes them all um, become parallel because it is at the fo I mean quasi focus as a result it is quasi parallel. Now, all that he had to do was to use a condenser lens to uh, focus it on I mean image it onto the sample. We will uh, see that uh, the diagrams and then um, how it translates to the uh, imaging of the sample um, in a um, in a little bit uh, in the in the, um, in the next lecture. All right. Thank you.